little less babbling and a little more reading. <laughs> I gotta get back up. My partner's up over that hill. Probably got, probably thinks I got chewed on by a grizzly bear by now. I gotta, I'll try to squeeze out two more emails here. And that's it. That battery's about dead. I got two left up here with me and I gotta save them for other stuff. So listen to this. Hey Steve, I hope you're well, brother. My name is James Tanner. I'm 62 years old now, and I was 37 when this happened. I want to thank you for giving me a no-bullshit place to share this. I shared part of it online before, but even, and even that little bit helped me. Oh, I, I, I shared part of it on, I shared part of it one time before, and even that helped, that little bit helped me. This was bow season. Even though we aren't supposed to, most of us carry a handgun during bow season around here. I had a climbing stand about halfway up a mountain on a ridge full of white oak acorns and other browse deer love around here. I could never get the wind coming down the mountain into my face where I could have been downwind from where I figured the deer moved to feed at night. This evening I got there for an evening hunt and the wind was perfect to hunt that stand. I hunt my way down to and from my stands, easing in and out. I got up in my stand and pulled my bow up with me, using a paracord like always to raise and lower my bow. That afternoon, all the deer I saw were moving pretty fast and away from me, so I thought I'd messed up somehow. I stayed until poor bow shooting light and I eased my way down the tree. The whole mountain got quiet. Not even the tree peepers sang out. I lowered my bow and stand and got down and stepped out of the stand, bent over to unsnap my bow and started to stand up. When I did, when I did, something screamed, roared, growled at me. It was ungodly. It went on for a lot longer than anything should have, not to mention it hit me square up in the chest like a, sh like a shove. Buddy, this was nothing like any animal sound from this area and it got my full attention fast. The scream was only about 40 feet uphill from behind me. Some private hedge that was grown up and over a fig or persimmon tree that was fruiting out but I could not see it at all. Then the damn thing started chatting at me in what nearly sounded like drunken gibberish. It done that crazy shit a few times and I admit it spooked me. I started easing sideways down the mountain to an old logging road to hike the mile or so to my pickup truck at camp but wouldn't turn my back to it. I had an old Browning HP 9 mil on my side with a full mag and one on the pipe and even had another full mag in my belt holster rig. For some reason I didn't draw my pistol out yet even when I got to the road bend. When I headed for the camp this thing kept pace with me. Like if I took five fast steps it stopped quick and did the same thing I did. About half a mile from the camp there was an open logged out strip about 50 feet or so wide and on that side of the mountain like a fire break. The way I figured it the way I figured it out was it would have to come out in the open if it wanted to keep track of me. When I got there, I stepped out in the opening a little, pulled my pistol and cocked the hammer back. As I stopped, it took two pretty loud steps and stopped also, almost like it wanted to make sure I knew it was still there. When I walked across the spot, I leveled my pistol and waited, about, waited but it never came out, of the, out in the, into the clear. This is There's no paragraphs, it's just straight shot, so sorry about the hesitant reading uh, style. After what seemed like forever, I heard it start real slow and quiet back up towards the same way we came in. Steve, when I got to my old four-wheel drive truck, I grabbed my 30 odd 6 from behind the seat, laid it, and my 9 mil beside me in the seat. I don't know how long I sat there, but it was dark by now and had to get out to lock my old style hubs because the road ran backside of that mountain and for all I know it crossed over and was waiting for me to drive out in the old logging road and I wasn't going to stop. Nothing else happened on my way out, but I didn't stop near there to unlock my hubs. But when I got home, my wife was in the kitchen. She gave me a funny look and asked me, was I all right? And I said I had a, and said I had a stunned look on my face. How do you tell somebody about that crazy kind of crap? So I just told her a bobcat had stepped out on me while I was hiking out, and it shook me a little. She pretty much told me I was full of shit. I've never hunted the lease land by myself again, and we were supposed to release the land after the gun season that year, but I told my buddies I wasn't going in on the lease again. I never told them why, but believe me, 
I put up a lot of work in that land building food plots and shooting houses, so they were all surprised by this move. I had hunted fish, hiked, and camped solo about my whole life, and outdoor activities took up most of my spare time. Now I don't hunt anymore, and no hiking and camping either. I still fish, but no longer hike and fishing, just fish the rivers around here. I never saw this damn thing, so I can't swear to anything, but I know that was but I know that what was there wasn't a down monkey. Two other things I can say was I was downwind of it and never smelled a nasty odor in that crazy chattering I heard it again. Holy cow, this is hard to read this one for some reason. I heard it again a while back because for some reason I watched a video called something like Sierra Sounds. When I heard that crazy chattering on the video, the hair on my most of my body stood up straight, like electrical shock. I have little doubt that if that thing had wanted me bad enough, 16 rounds of 9 mil was not going to stop it. I wish this had never happened to me, and people that think these things are some kind of a monkey and go out looking for them are in need of some kind of counseling. It pisses me off that it's taken me all these years to finally talk about this shit. I want to thank you for a place so folks can have honest talk about this without worrying about this without worrying about what idiots say to them. I've never really cared what folks think about me, but nobody should put up with what some of these assholes say about it. Again, thanks, brother, and keep spreading the word about this. I hope my telling about what happened to me helps somebody with a similar experience. H. All right, man. Thanks for the email. Sorry, all of you, if I read that kind of awkward. Um, I don't know what's going on. Am I frozen right now? Probably. Am I tired? Guaranteed. Um, there wasn't any commas in there. <laughs> and those sentences were long, so it makes it a little challenging at times. <clears throat> when it comes to people ridiculing this topic, and all of you, tens, probably tens of thousands of people that have these encounters, um, you just have to realize, think about it when you're dying. Think about when you're laying in your deathbed. Do all those strange people in the world that you thought maybe might maybe possibly look down on you and ridicule you, how much do you think they're going to count when you're laying there dying, recounting your life experience? Hmm? I'm pretty confident everybody's going to have the same answer, right? So quit worrying about what other humans think. The majority of humans today are so brainwashed and programmed to be dumb as a hammer, it's overwhelming. Just keep that, keep that note in your head, okay? And stop worrying about about what people think. Um, and for all you people that think you're going to go out and prove that these beings exist, you've missed the boat. It's been proven a gazillion times over. The proof has been out and available for a long time. And uh, I don't understand why. Here's here's one more thing to share with you. What really frustrates the crap out of me. See, I've mentioned before a few times is, you know, after I've seen these things twice now, maybe three times, and heard them numerous times, um, here's what I'm going to share with you guys. With, I've probably shared this before, but I'm going to keep sharing it. Is This is how my brain wor has worked in the past. You know, once you realize when you've seen these things and you realize they are real, my brain goes instantly to, I'm pissed off. I'm being lied to, I've been misled, I've been lied to. And honest information has been withheld from me and basically the rest of the world, intentionally. That really makes me angry. So when I share with you why, what frustrates me about all these ding-dongs who have craved the camera time when it comes to this topic, claim to be an expert, claim to be a researcher, or claim to be in the Bigfoot community, I, with the very short time attention that I've given all of these individuals of my time watching them online for an average maybe one and a half minutes each, sometimes a little longer, is not one of those doorknobs states what I state as in, not one of them mentions that they're pissed off that we're being lied to and misled by whoever it is who claims to be authorities. Not one of these researchers claims to be pissed off or even remotely concerned of the fact that we're being lied to and misled. Not one of them. <laughs> they stay focused on footprints and trying to set up trail cameras and leaving apples in the ground. Man, it just like shoots right over their head. You know, we're gonna look at these dermal ridges and this metatarsal break and you know, the depth in the sand. 
All right, enough of the horse shit. Get past it. Get on with it. Why aren't you addressing the fact that we're being lied to and manipulated and misled? Why not? Why aren't any of you focused on that? Hmm? Tell me that. Because the more you stay focused on those things that have been focused on for literally, what, a couple lifetimes now? Tens of thousands of times? You're looking like a frickin' bunch of frickin' doorknobs. Okay? And that's how I see you right now. It's unfortunate. I'm speaking my mind. I see all of you as a bunch of frickin' doorknobs. Stand there doing the exact same thing each other have been doing for years and not demanding the answer of why we're being misled and lied to. The proof's been out forever. Okay? Forever. <laughs> we don't need any more proof. If, if your brain functions and fires independently and you can see through the, this, the bullshit smokescreen, every single one of these emails that I share with you is proof. Whoever it is that made it okay to automatically discredit a character because of something I saw and shared with you, they're a douchebag. I'd like to kick every single one of them in the nuts if I could. But I can't. But I guess I can verbally on here, can't I? <laughs> but anyway, I guess I'm starting to babble. I am frozen. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm feeling pretty exhausted. I don't know. I think I put on about 40 miles. Last few days, I gotta get going back to camp. But I want you all to think about that. Think about the blatant representation of going in circles that is laid down on top of you from all the popular names in the so-called Bigfoot community, which I am proud to say that I am not a member of. All right? How many people out there do you actually, actually have you seen that's pissed off that a bunch of your lies have been turned upside down and that you're being systematically lied to and misled? How many of those clowns have even said that sentence in all the years you've seen him in all these stupid TV channels and shows dancing around metatarsal breaks and foot casts? What a bunch of blow asses.